Well, what is everybody? This is Ace Designs 107. I hope that you're having a great day. And today what we have is a 2D banner tutorial in Photoshop. So I'm going to show you how to make this banner style. So yeah, it's a really easy banner style to do, especially if you have some stocks at the ready. But um, what I am going to do is I'm going to supply all the images that I used in this tutorial on how to make this. So um, if you want to make the exact same effect what I made, just go to the description of the video and download the file so you can make this effect. So first of all, um, you want to have a YouTube banner template. So this will be obviously provided in the description below for download. So yeah, make sure you go get that. Another thing is you want to have a Call of Duty map that you'd like, preferably Black Ops 2 because there are some really nice Black Ops 2 map renders, but I have a Call of Duty stocks GFX pack that I have for myself, and unfortunately I won't be giving this away, um, these are all my own, but you know, I'm really sorry that I can't give it away, I feel like this is my stuff and I want to keep it to my own because of this is how I design, so I'm going to use this picture, this picture will be in the file of download like i said in the description below so to make sure you don't miss that out and i'm just going to drag and drop it onto this um youtube bennett template and i'm just going to find a nice little thing like that and then i'm going to press ctrl t if my photoshop will respond and i'm just going to find something like this Bam. And obviously, as you can see, that this isn't finished off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit M on my keyboard to select the rectangular marquee tool. And you can select this for an example. And then press Control c Control v And what that does is it slices this up. So when I press Control t I have like the exact same there. And you can't really see. You know what I mean there? Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and do flip horizontally and I am just going to hit it like that. And obviously this isn't working out, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press control I'm going to press control E and merge that layer with the layer below or just shift click and press control E and that'll merge them together. I'm going to press Control T and I'm just going to resize this a tiny bit more so it can fit it. Right, bam. That looks really nice like that. Um, you know, get an angle that you like for this tutorial. I'm just going to leave the water in like that. I really like the beach map ones. It creates a really nice effect and you can do some cool things on the water such as add texture like this. So the next thing that you want to do is you want to have a character render. So if you go into Google and search up Black Ops 2 PNG character render. I'm sure that you can find one, but for this tutorial, I'm going to use one that I have in my pack. Hmm, <clears throat> which one am I going to use? I'm thinking about the sniper since that one's like a really nice one and I use it for a lot of my Call of Duty renders. Let's see if I can find it. Come on, where are you, bro? There you are. So I have this one. It's made by JM. So big shout out to you, bro. It's very nice. And I'm just going to drag and drop this onto my document. Remember, guys, that this will be in the description below to download. So I really like how this um, plane is there. So I want to kind of keep that as a star attraction. But, you know, I want to have the character also in the picture. So I'm going to resize it just to fit the document a bit more. Okay, so this is a nice size, but obviously you can see that this is interrupting the plane. So if I press Control T, right click and do flip horizontal, then I've got this and like you can mess around with the orientations. But in this case, um, you can see more of the plane like this. So I've got it like this. And what we have here is we have our main scene that we're going to be working with. So we've got this extended out and we are ready to start working. So the next thing that you want to do is you want to make that RGB split. So 
I'm going to teach you how to do that. So I'm going to press Control T, Control J. Make sure that the character render layer is selected, and I'm just going to double click on the original layer, and I'm just going to name this render, and then I'm going to double click on the new one that I duplicated and name this blue. The reason why I'm going to name this blue is because I'm going to apply a color overlay effect. So you're going to double click on the blue layer and you're going to go to overlay and then you're going to go to the color, click on the color little box and then um, just find the blue. So you want a baby blue like that, press OK. Now move this blue layer under the render layer and press Ctrl T and hit your arrow key a couple of times sidewards or upwards doesn't really matter what orientation you want but for this one I'm, i always hit it sidewards i don't know why i just like doing it sidewards and then i'm going to press the render layer again and i'm going to press ctrl j and then i'm going to move this under the render layer again and then double click it and go to color overlay and change this one to either a green or a purple so or a pinkish so i'm going to select a baby pink like that press ok press ctrl t hit my arrow keys a couple of times and then bam what i have here is i have that rgb split effect which is really nice and i'm just going to hide this so i'm just going to make sure that this is on my color all right sweet so also don't forget to rename this the color one so this one is pink all right sweet so we're working with something quite nice here Oh my gosh, whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry guys, my cap locks is on. All right, sweet. So now what we have is we've got something like this. So the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna create um, some really nice, like what it's called, you could say triangles in the background and some patterns. So it doesn't really matter what shape you want. Um, but for this, I'm just going to use triangles like I did in my previous banner. And I'm going to get the shape tool, hold my mouse click, and get the polygon tool. And then I'm going to change the size to 3, obviously, to make it a triangle. Now I'm going to go to the fill, and I'm going to make it blue because, as you can see, the color that's facing to the right is the blue color. So I'm going to make this a baby blue, or just get my eyedropper tool, and I'm just going to go bam. Oh, we'll just wait. Get your foreground color and just select that as a blue and then when they'll change the fill automatically to that blue what you used and then click and drag with your shape tool and just make a triangle like that like this size all right sweet and then we want to rasterize this layer so we're just going to right click and do rasterize layer and we're going to just name this triangle and we are going to um apply that you know that different color like thing you see going on triangle so we're going to get our pen tool and we are going to click here click one there and then click somewhere approximately in the middle you can just guesstimate this and then just click there and then right click with that selection make selection feather radius to zero and then we are going to press Control u with this selection and we are going to change the darkness to like that press ok and then press ctrl d and then we are going to select again a point so we're going to hit our point here you can zoom in right next to the pixels so you can get a bit accurate and then just click around right click make selection press ok press ctrl u and then make this color a lighter version so I like just go like to my lightness and then go here a bit to minus and then press ctrl u so what we have going on here is we have this really nice you could say abstract or 2d shape and then we're just going to press ctrl day on this shape and we are going to arrange it into like a pattern so what you what i like to do is i like to make the sides perpendicular to each other so like parallel I mean and then you can get like some really cool things going on here so I'm just gonna do like that like that press ctrl J you don't want to make the pattern too big because you're just gonna replicate this really simply later on like that and then press ctrl J on that just ctrl T 
And then this one, I like to mix it up a bit, like tilt it like that. Press Control J, and then tilt it around like that. And then press Control J, and then bring this one like over there. So you wanna make it kind of a little bit abstract, you know, you don't want it too uniform. Um, depends what really effect you're going for. But there, we've got something like this. And then we're just going to select all these triangle layers that we have and press Control, hold Shift select that all together, press control E, and what that does is it merges all those layers into one. I'm just gonna rename this into pattern. So you guys can follow along easier. Then we're gonna go to our move select move tool by pressing V on the keyboard or just simply pressing up here. And then we're just gonna press control T and just downsize this to like small enough pattern. Um, Yeah, that's a nice one. And then we're just going to duplicate, we move it under our render and just duplicate it a lot. Just control J. And as you can see, the triangles look like they are blending into the thing which is beautiful. That's what we're trying to go for. Sweet, press control J on this. Now, on my other one, you probably see, well, that's a lot of triangles that you made there. See, I made li little less than that. Doesn't really matter. It just really depends what you're trying to go for. And then I'm just going to select all the patterns again with holding shift and then press control E and they'll merge it into one. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to filter, distort, ripple. And I really like the ripple effect. The reason for this is because of it makes a ripple, obviously. And I can change the amount to like probably 75, and then it makes that ripple. And if the ripple isn't big enough, just press Control F, and that should reapply that same settings. So something like that is really nice. So I just press Control F twice. You'll be able to see on the screen with the keystrokes. And then we've got something really nice going on here. So the next thing that we want to do is just rename this to pattern again. Yes. All right, sweet. And make sure that this is under the render layer and under the blue layer. So it looks like it's actually coming out from the blue. And then the next thing that you want to do is you can either go to filter, distort, uh, what is it, wave? Filter, distort. Stylize wind. And this will blow it off like a wind, obviously. And if we can get this into zoom, you can see the preview of it. But um, it just really depends what you're really looking for. See, like this. This will blow it into a wind pattern, but obviously that's a bit too distorted for me. Just really depends what you're trying to go for. So the next thing that you want to do is grab your brush tool. And what we are going to do is we are going to make some abstract brush, um, you know, splatters onto the picture. As you can see, it's coming off like here. So to do this, you want to have a brush pack. Um, you can install the brush pack that's in the description below. This is what I used in the tutorial. So if you go to your brush and just pick some brushes, like abstract brushes like this. It'll be in the description below, as I said. Change our foreground color to the purple what we used, or the pinkish, and then change the size of the brush down to like, down to like that size. I'm going to select our pink layer, press Control Shift N, and name this layer Brushes, and make sure that this is in between the pink and pattern layer. Make sure you're back onto the brushes and we're just going to click a little bit around. So I'm going to click like there. We're going to, you can also make new layers and then just control T and make the brushes split smaller instead of, um, and they just tilt it around instead of like resizing all the brushes and everything. And then you can obviously change around the brushes a bit. Like that, like that. You know, you don't want to have the straight lines coming off like the colors because, you know, that doesn't create a nice abstract effect. Um, 
you know, that's where this effect really shines. And with the abstract look, that's why it's really popular. This, I'm trying to show you as a beginner thing, beginner tutorial, you know, I don't want to make this tutorial too complicated. That's why I'm splitting it up into two parts. So if you guys can't follow along with the first part, these guys probably shouldn't go on to the second part, but you know, free to come along. And I'm just going to hit a splatter like, uh, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. What else should I do? All right, I'm going to hit this one one more time. One more time. I'm just going to resize this brush down to like that. Yeah, like that. Eh, that's nice. That'll do. And obviously, the whatever color is coming off the gun tip, you want to get a long brush like this, change the size like this, press Control shift n press Control t like that. And then duplicate that layer, make it a bit more strong, press Control j and then merge that back into the brushes by pressing Control e And then what you can see is we've got these brushes. Now you can press Control t and resize these brushes, but obviously that's going to distort up everything. In this case, it doesn't really that much. So we've got something nice like this. And obviously there's still blue in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to press Control shift n rename this to blue. And we are going to get the color blue up. And obviously get some blue painting. Yeah, it's a bit too big. You know, this, it's a really simple banner to make, and I, that's why I'm trying to make a tutorial on it, because I know that a lot of you guys do gaming in Call of Duty, not just Call of Duty, like Halo or first-person shooter games, and this is why, like, I really recommend doing this, this effect, and that I hope that you guys do enjoy it. We nearly had 100 views also, um, 100 videos, so I've nearly made 100 videos of content for these guys. So I'm planning on doing a montage for it, but um, I'm probably, I'm speculating because that's like a lot of video editing to do because I don't have all those videos, so I would have to go back and find all them. But there we go. We've got these blue splatters, and that looks really nice, actually. Um, I'm a bit more happy with this effect than this effect. But, you know, it's really nice anyway, besides point. And so we have done the first part of this tutorial. So if you would like to continue watching this tutorial series, make sure to go to the second part of this tutorial, which will be in a, up a couple of days after this tutorial has been uploaded. So thank you for watching the video. Um, make sure to tune in for the second part, and I'll be sure to greet you very happily again. Bye. <laughs>